Hi everyone, welcome to our Managing a New Reality webinar series, specifically uh, for families that have children with special needs who are now finding themselves in a unique uh, position of distance learning and schooling at home, um, and also all of the various behaviors, anxieties, and everything um, that might be coming up um, as a function of this new reality. So, um, I have a great video that I want to share with you today. One of our guests was unable to be there in person, so we pre-recorded um, what I think are going to be some very valuable tips and strategies for you from a mom that is currently homeschooling her children, but also recognizes that this is certainly not the same as a homeschooling situation, that we really are in a new reality. So with that, I'm going to turn the floor over to Barbara and I'll let you introduce yourself. Hi everybody. Um, so my name is Barbara Bataro. I am a currently and previously before the pandemic homeschooling mom of five. Um, and uh, Aubrey asked that I come on and talk to you guys a little bit about the things that we do in our home that you guys might find useful. Um, just like she said, I think one of the biggest differences is that you guys are now being asked to do school at home um, whereas this was our choice to do homeschooling and there's a really big difference between that um, and uh, and what you guys have to do now so a um, couple things one i have some slides up and i just want to let you guys know if i'm looking away it's probably because uh, i'm i'm looking at my slides just to give you guys a full picture of um of the tips and the things that uh, Aubrey and I spoke about the other day. So let's just start. Um, I think the biggest thing that we spoke about is um, being present. So right now we're in a totally different situation than we were a month ago and families had everything set up. Maybe things weren't running perfectly. They're certainly not always running perfectly in our house, but you're doing the best that you can. You have your activities scheduled. You have your OT stuff scheduled. You have everything that you need. Um, schools supporting you to the best of their ability. Pandemic hits. Now everyone's at home. Um, you're probably working. Some people are working full-time. Some people are working part-time. Some people have lost their jobs. Um, kids are now stuck in front of a computer trying to do online learning that they haven't done before. There's a lot of things that are really different. Um, there are things that were hard before that are harder now. There's also some real beauty in this. Um, and so I think the biggest number one thing is for the parent just to be present. So it's okay that it's hard. It's going to be hard. We have to accept that it's hard. And I think when you start to accept and not try to change the fact that this is difficult, um, it's going to actually make things easier. Acceptance is one of the biggest things because if we are trying to run away from the fact that this is hard, it's going to cascade into a bunch of ruminations. It's going to worsen anxiety. Just saying from the get go, like, okay, this is new. This is going to be difficult for a plethora of reasons, but we're able to do it. We're going to do it. We're going to do it even if it's hard. Um, I think second, self-care is huge and i'm sure there's going to be some laughter about that because it's like how in the world are we possibly going to do self-care when we have all of these things that we're supposed to get done in a day there's just not enough time but i think that without that piece things end up going awry and then you're all day putting out fires instead of starting from a place with lower anxiety a routine expectations when you are able to put those things in order for yourself then you're able to handle all of the external things, um, tantrums, whatever it is, and you're able to see more clearly with a clear head um, and less emotion, right? More logically. And obviously no one's perfect at this. We're certainly all trying every day to do the best that we can. Um, but I think if you start with uh, the acceptance that this is gonna be probably harder than you're used to, and also with the fact that you actually need to take care of yourself, um, you're gonna have a smoother time. So, so for people who like, let's say maybe they don't have a great exercise routine or yoga or meditation or anything that they really um, put in place for themselves, that's mm -hmm. a whole nother routine that they might have to think about. 
um, maybe social media has been, you know, their go-to, what would you say about self-care versus distraction? Like what advice would you give to those parents in trying to balance that the other distraction time, which may yeah. also be a little bit of self-care in and of itself, just to get away from your kids for five minutes. Right. So I think that there's a couple of good points in there. I think that um, it's really easy to jump on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and get that really fast laugh that you're looking for, text a friend, a meme, all those things. But um, those are ways in which we distract ourselves rather than being present to the moment, right? So I find that if I'm like, oh my goodness, okay, we're in our, you know, now we're in our 10th hour of being awake today together today. And I am like, where are all the other people in the world, right? Especially in quarantine. It's easy to jump on and look for something to give you that fast fix of either feeling connected or giving you the laugh that you want. But I find then that all of a sudden, just like if you pick up the phone to talk, right, your kids are right there. They need you even more. And so um, some of those things uh, actually are counterproductive. Um, but I think that um, there are ways that we can set up for breaks for ourselves during the day that don't end up being counterproductive. So um, we're the parent, right? Our children are the children. And it's really important to be able to set those things as, as your baseline, manage yourself, right? There's not a lot that we can control right now, but um, managing our own distractions is definitely a, something we can control. We can stop checking Instagram. Um, we can stop being ruminative. I think that that's a really big deal. Um, part of self-care is not telling yourself stories in your head, that other parents are doing it better, um, that you're never gonna get through this, that there's no way that this can work out, um, everything's going wrong. All of those things are stories in your head that actually change what could be a successful day um, into a space where you're ruminating and things are just getting worse, right? And finally, you're, to you're totally overwhelmed. Um, I'm totally guilty of this and uh, it's very clear on a day when I have done self-care and um, how my day goes, how the kids respond to that versus a day when I am like scraping by, ruminating, thinking that everybody else has the answers and I'm totally failing. Um, it shows up in like every aspect of, of your home. So, so it sounds like you're talking about um, starting the day kind of Mm -hmm. acting with intention about how you're going to go about your day versus starting in reaction mode. You know, yeah. what does my kid need? What's my, what's going on in the media? What's the latest update on the health stuff so mm -hmm. that your brain doesn't start getting pulled in 50 million directions, but you're starting out with an intention for your day and being intentional about when those breaks are and when those times are to uh, reach out to a friend or to check the news or whatever it is. Yeah, so I think that that's an important point, getting out of reaction and into action, right? So either we start, um, we start the day off where we're just trying to get by or we start off uh, really specifically and we move from there. So you're, let, you're taking control of your day rather than letting your day take control of you, which inevitably things will go wrong, but if you start in reaction, it's a cascade. If you're starting from action, then you're able to handle those things that are going to go wrong regardless of how much you've planned in a, in a much better way. So the first thing um, for us is that we have a routine. And um, I am an organized person, but I really fight against routine. So this is difficult for me. But um, I don't know if I mentioned this before. So I have five kids. They happen to um, all be uh, so, um, six and a half and younger. So we have a lot of little people in our house and um, routine is really important for us. Some things for our family uh, that make a big difference are um, we have bedtimes and wake up times for everybody. I think that a lot of people are used to that, um, especially, you know, wake up times. If you have a job outside of the house, if your kids are going to school, those things are critical to keep even if you're home all the time. Um, I think that something else that goes along with that is um, something that I'll talk a little bit about later, but we need to get up and get dressed for the day, kids as well. Um, and so there's there shouldn't be this idea of like, we'll just sort of fit all of this stuff in, but it's like, you know, the week is one long weekend of sleeping in and pajamas. Like we're in a, a, a different type of lifestyle now, but it's still, 
it's still a lifestyle that we, we need a routine for this, right? It's good for everybody. Um, so we have wake up time and bedtime for every family member. It's the same every single day. Um, the way that we've created our routine, especially for me, this is helpful because again, uh, I really balk at the idea of, of um, keeping to a schedule, but it's very important. So we have mapped out the things that are critical or that um, are immovable parts. Obviously, we need to eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, and from those three points, I build in the other things to our day. So at our house, everybody, I wake up at 5.30. My husband wakes up at 5.30. The kids wake up at 7. We go into breakfast right after that. We start homeschooling in the morning right after that. Um, I have little pieces in that day where, uh, you know, especially the younger kids, they get a snack or they're doing an activity while I'm homeschooling. We have lunch together as a family. Um, we have nap time. We have outdoor play. We have dinner. And then from there, we do, you know, baths and whatever else it is until bedtime. Those pieces are really important because if I have those three anchors, um, I can sort of change if we have a doctor's appointment in the morning, we homeschool at nap time. Like there's ways to move things around and be flexible, but with immovable parts, um, it gives you a structure to your day so that you're not just trying to build out of nothing. Now um, you also mentioned that sometimes the immovable part is the sick child yeah, or the tantruming child, right. or yeah. maybe in this case, the special need, the child who has a lot of special needs and yeah. requires toileting every right. 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, how do you deal with the immovable parts that are really um, more challenging immovable parts? <laughs> yeah. So uh, there are a couple of ways. I think it depends on the family. I think it depends on how, how your family structure is set up and what's expected of you, right? So things are going to be different for everyone. Um, whether you're working, you're working part-time, whatever those things are, um, you have to give yourself a break. Uh, I think what we started off talking about is that homeschooling is different than schooling at home. And um, what Aubrey and I had talked about before was that because I've chosen to homeschool, I have had the freedom, the great freedom to choose our curriculum and choose how we set up our day and figure out like who needs what because every child is different um, and build that in. So that's something that we started a long time ago where um, this is all new, but when you're doing something with a child who needs like extra time or every 30 minutes they need something different, those things are immovable parts of your day and you're gonna build in on a schedule where those things happen. Sometimes you can't build in when a child's going to have a tantrum. Sometimes you can't build in um, who decides not to take a nap today. Sometimes you can't build in who's going to be sick. Um, the days that are really bad, uh, my husband and I call days of low expectation. Or if things have just been so crazy for a few days, we just announce in the beginning a day of low expectation. And what that means for us is that I'm going to take a breath. Everyone's going to take a breath. And we're going to do our best to love each other and to get through it, realizing, remembering that we care about each other and that we're doing the best that we can. And I'm not going to add in like an extra craft. I'm not going to overwhelm our schedule with things that, um, that are unnecessary. Like we're going to start from the bottom and, and slowly move up. Um, so it's more about a day of um, self-care really for the whole family that you're taking where you're saying, you know what, maybe the academic work isn't as important today. Maybe I need to email the teacher and say, look, we're not getting the assignment done yep. today. Um, and instead, uh, we've been talking about this a lot in our web webinar series is thinking about uh, things like rhythmic movement, pressure, yeah. or deep touch pressure, hugs, cozy, snuggly things, um, yeah. respiration, breathing activities, blowing bubbles, whatever it might be that helps everybody kind of get back to a good place, um, yes. doing something that's their favorite. Um, are there, are there some things that, you know, work for you guys on the low expectation days that you tend to gravitate towards? Yeah. So, um, I'm realizing I'm jumping around on my slides a lot, but, um, uh, you know, I was thinking, especially when you talk about blowing bubbles, you know, some days, some of our schoolwork is reading, right? There's a lot of reading. And so, especially on the days when we have a day of low expectations or someone is sick or whatever it might be, um, we get out and we just, I bundle everybody up 
we go out for a walk or we're blowing bubbles outside together or we're sitting on the couch and we're snuggling and we're reading a story then. So, you know, all of that like real physical touch um, is so important especially for the kids who need even more um, brushing exercises. You know, um, my, all of my kids actually ask, ask for it now. And so they know when they're like, we call it like this, um, we call it like uh, in, a, in a black hole, being in a black hole. When, you're, when they're really overwhelmed, they're so upset, they need, you know, they need to learn to self-regulate, but sometimes that's really hard and they need help self-regulating. So um, we try to come down to their level and those days are just days that we're like, that's our focus. So in homeschooling, often we say um, that everything is schooling. You can teach your child to tie their shoelaces. You can teach your child to brush their teeth. Um, part of that is also teaching them self-care, self-regulation. So you're not failing by not doing the math problem. Um, if your child needs help self-regulating, if they need a break, if they need to get out, if they need to be moving, if they need to jump on their trampoline for 10 minutes, like those things are building who they are in a way that just sitting down and doing a math problem is not. So I think that that's also really important um, to keep in mind that all of those things are good, really good. Um, I'm sure a lot of you know that, but with this added um, piece of having to do school at home, it sort of puts that at a second tier of importance when um, when it shouldn't be, right? So we're trying to triage things, but keeping everyone at their best baseline is one of the most important parts about that. Um, yeah, I think I, I think that's actually a really good point um, that does come up a lot um, when I have talks with other uh, guests as we're lining up the week yeah. is um, the whole idea that, you know, when you look back, you do want to build resilient children, yeah. you know, yeah. it, that those life skills of how do I handle when I have a bad day, yeah, they actually might serve the child better in the long run and maybe decrease the number of phone calls that you get from school yeah. or even enhance your ability to advocate for your child when you go to the PPT meetings and say, you know what, when I, when we were schooling at home, mm -hmm. you know, this is what worked for my child. This is what helped us through, you know, I don't want my child to have all these behaviors around reading or have a meltdown every time something goes badly socially, yes. but in practicing this balance, this, self, you know, having the family self-regulate together, this is what I learned about my child. And this, you know, is something that I, I really think is a valuable part of his education. So he can be a resilient learner, not someone who has so much academic pressure that yes. they're then, you know, kind of shut down to learning, which is the opposite of what we want in this time. Yes, absolutely. Um, and I think that, couple other things I was going to say um, about this is that, you know, all of those things I'm sure parents know, I think some of it gets lost in this crazy situation, but um, attending to all of those needs reduces many times tantrums, acting out for attention. You know, I have um, a handful of very small children. And so it's really easy sometimes to take care of the older ones and then let the little ones sort of just play with the bigger ones. But when that happens, I have little children who are looking for more attention. And so that I'm constantly running behind them, putting out fires. But if I take 10 minutes with my two-year-old and we play a farm game together, she's getting that one-on-one, -on -one, like, I see you, time she's seen she's heard she's attended to and then magically the rest of the day is going smoother because she knows that she is loved she knows that she's taken care of she knows that she's worth it and she's not grasping at that um so when it sometimes seems like there's no time to add in those extra things um it actually for us changes the dynamic of the day very often and um, I'm able to get more done. So I think that sort of goes along with this idea of self-care, right? If you're doing things ahead of time, you're not putting out fires later. Um, I wanted to say also um, regarding routine and sort of setting yourself up for success. So I mentioned this really briefly, but uh, my husband and I get up before the rest of the family. I have to do it. If I don't do it, um, my day starts in total chaos. 
So it's hard to get up early. Um, it's called the heroic minute where you make the decision to not hit snooze and instead to put your feet on the floor and, and get in the shower. It's really hard some days. Um, if I don't do it, uh, the response that I get from myself and from the rest of the family um, is much harder to overcome than that one minute of, of tiredness where I have to convince myself to get up. Um, for us, so can I jump in yeah, on that? I totally, actually totally. heard a really uh, great <laughs> strategy um, from uh, some, yeah, I listen to a lot of people who talk about the habits of success yeah. and, and if you are not a get out of bed in the morning person, I'm not. you know, sometimes you really just have to do five, four, three, two, one, blast off, throw off the covers yeah. and stand up and just stay there for a second. And then you can move yourself to action. It's not that you want to, but that first yeah. action literally is just standing up out of your bed and you say, all right, I'm, I'm going to get going. Totally. Yes. I am. All of this is to say, this is totally counterintuitive to who I am. Um, but, uh, to be able to serve my family, I have to do these things. So if it were me, I would be in, you know, I would be up until midnight watching Netflix and eating candy bars and sleeping until 11. But, um, that's, that's who, who I want to be, <laughs> who I have to be is somebody totally different. Um, so, uh, so getting up before the family for, for our family, um, I either pick out my kids clothes ahead of time. Uh, meaning the night before, or I have my older kids uh, do it for themselves and for their younger siblings. And they love that. They find actually great joy in, um, in like serving our family that way. Gives them a little freedom to choose what they want to wear. We're in quarantine, so it doesn't really matter what anyone's wearing. Um, but it definitely starts the day off uh, in a little bit more of an organized way. So a couple, uh, couple words on that. One, I know a lot of homeschooling families who uh, will put their kids in uniforms to set the tone for the day. Maybe, um, you know, they're, I'm sure some of the kids are going to private school, so maybe you just have them wear their private school uniforms or whatever they would wear to school to kind of, you know, start your day off in a direction that says, like, here are the expectations for the day. Nobody should be in pajamas all day long. Um, I think that's really important. The other piece of that is it puts them in a mindset of like, this is what we're doing. This is when we're schooling. This is when we're taking a nap or this is when we're in, you know, it's time to calm down and go to bed. It's sort of like that state dependent. Um, I wear pajamas only when I'm ready for bed as part of a routine to get into. Um, so that's so what you're saying, like find those cues or yes. those little triggers yes. that are environmental and mm -hmm. every house might be different because some kids literally wear pajamas all day because they have tactile problems and sure. they need to, yes, yes. but on the, but whatever it is, there is some visual and it like experiential trigger that says we're doing this now because we set the environment up or we set ourselves up in a particular way. Yes, exactly. Of course. So some kids are going to be wearing uniforms. Some kids are going to be wearing pajamas, but there are definitely going to be things within that umbrella that are going to give each child whatever it is that they need to know what's expected of them, even in an environmental, uh, like an environmental cue, like you said. Um, so the other thing I was going to say is um, what we do for our kids is, um, especially because I have little kids, but we will tell them what the day is going to look like. And we might, depending on how big of a change it might be, we might tell them the day before. Um, but often like at breakfast time, they'll sit down, I'll make them breakfast and I'll say, here's what's going to happen today. Today looks like this. Um, you know, I have this, this today is really great, beautiful weather. We're going to spend two hours outside today and we're going to, you know, whatever plant flowers, then we're going to do this. Then we're going to come in and have lunch. Then I'm going to put down these, you know, two for a nap and, uh, to my other two kids, I'm going to do this and this as far as homeschooling with you this afternoon. So those things, letting them know ahead of time has been really successful for us because kids need structure. And especially in this time, more than ever, uh, everything is different. And you might know how the day is going to go, but they have no idea. They're just sort of waiting 
for you to put down the pegs of, uh, of structure for them. And so letting them know ahead of time gives them a sense of feeling, uh, um, a feeling of control, a sense of control. And um, my family has, has really benefited from that greatly. Um, We're going to be um, talking about visual schedules later in the week. Oh. And so to tack on to that, I think one of the other um, suggestions really is, you know, for those kids who do have trouble remembering, especially longer routines and sequences yeah. like that, because it's new for them, they're not used to it, and they haven't heard it, you know, every day like your children have, yeah. um, is maybe even taking pictures just, you know, as a first thing this week, taking pictures of your child sitting down, of your child outside, of your child, you know, um, getting dressed, eating lunch, whatever it is. And then you can use that to build their personal um, schedule that you can help them reference, or you can even use later even to give them choices of, do you wanna play this or do you wanna play that while I work with so-and-so on yeah. our project? I think that's beautiful. And I think, um, yes, in line with that, I have a lot of non-readers. And so um, they have a little morning routine that they're supposed to do, you know, get themselves up, get dressed. Maybe it's throw away their nighttime diaper, whatever it is. But if you have a, a child who's, you know, especially a little kid or a child who has trouble remembering, and especially a child who can't read. So we've institu instituted this thing where we have like little pictures, like here's even a cartoon picture of, you know, someone putting their pajama or their, their clothes on for the day, someone throwing away um, something in the trash can, someone, you know, so that they look and they have their little chart in their room that shows them like, oh, here's my morning routine I'm supposed to do so that they're not running into my room, they're not running downstairs, they're not, you know, playing with toys because they're distracted. So I think that's a beautiful, um, a beautiful example of a way to give your kids the tools that they need to be grounded so that they can be successful in this routine for themselves. Um, you know, because let's be honest, like it's really easy to start nagging and, and um, that doesn't really help anyone. Um, so um, we have about four minutes left um, in our conversation. Um, I, I know we talked before, but quickly sum up like some of the other things that you had mentioned yeah. was planning for the week, not just for the day when it came yeah. to meals and chores, mm -hmm. try to batch batch cook or do batch, you know, choring or really like think about that and what can I just take off my plate so I don't have to focus on it during the week. And uh, in doing that also, which is the reason we are pre-recording this webinar today, because yeah. when you look at your whole week, you have yeah. to find out and, and make choices about what fits on what day. Mm -hmm. um, so can you also kind of give the parents some like help and words of wisdom as they kind of march march into this week with hopefully a new mindset. Yeah, so like you said quickly, um, batch cooking is huge. Uh, so if you're going to make, let's say a pot of chili, you're gonna make at least double that and then you're gonna freeze half of it, right? Nobody wants to eat chili every day for a week, but you're gonna maybe put half of it in the in the freezer. Those kinds of things, thinking ahead, so that all you have to do is take it out and stick it in a pot. Your dinner is done. Now you have whatever it is, an hour, hour and a half, two hours, instead of trying to clean up the kitchen and make dinner while other kids are running around, that's out of the way now. And that's really, really helpful um, in the long run. So those things are super important. Um, I think that all of this is to say that no family is perfect. Every family is different. Most people are trying their best to get by. Everybody has a different set of circumstances. Um, my family looks very different than most families because of the number and age of children that I have. Um, we have kids who need extra time, who need extra attention, who need extra things like sensory bins, um, a, a lot more patience. There's a, a lot that's really beautiful in every family. Um, and I think that looking for those things is super important. So um, certainly we can't build a new routine overnight. All of this stuff that we have done is by trial and error um, over a long period of time, far before we needed to do this because of a pandemic. Um, I think another thing to keep in mind is when you're schooling at home, your relationship with your child comes way above what they're accomplishing on paper. And as a homeschooling mom, it's something that I have uh, had to learn and had to really tweak so that when my job as teacher is done, 
my job as mom, my relationship as, as mom and child is not damaged because of anything, any frustration that we've had um, schooling together. So that's been something that we've worked on. And, um, and just to keep in mind that that's going to be the most important thing is your, is your relationship, regardless of what they're getting done at school. Um, I think that uh, I'm looking at my notes. There are still bad days, obviously, right? And we have our days of low expectations that come out of that. Um, simplicity is really key. So again, being present, stop reading CNN, stop reading um, all of these articles that are out there. Like, yes, it's important. Yes, we don't want our children to get sick, especially those that are very vulnerable. Um, but the media is there for hype. And the media is there to keep you coming back and to play on your fear. And so trying to be present, who is in your house right now, what you need to do to serve them is the most important thing and one of the best things that you can give them, um, that you're not ruminating, that you're not trying to mentally escape from whatever is going on. Um, what else was I going to say? Um, Another important thing that we do here a lot is we restart our day or we have little check-ins or we call them powwows. So if we've had an exceptionally difficult morning, um, maybe someone didn't sleep right, maybe we have low blood sugar running rampant through the house, maybe it's 10 a.m., maybe it's 2 p.m. We all sit down and I say, let's have a check-in. Let's restart our day, guys. Like, who can try to be the best version of themselves, me included? Who's not going to raise their voice anymore? Like, who is going to try really, really hard to help out our family? And uh, more than anybody else, I think I'm the one who needs the restart. But it's really helpful to touch base with those people that you love that you're doing this for. Um, and it gives everybody sort of a break. And, and what I hear in your language, actually, which is not something that uh, I, you know, I hear in the way that everyone speaks, is you're, you're constantly talking about serving your family. You're also um, encouraging the children to serve other children in the family and, be, and have an active role in the family, have an active role in supporting each other, mm -hmm. um, and, and being the best version of themselves, which yeah. I think is an important point. It's not meeting every rule and expectation that you have. It's right. the best version of your child for that day. And if the best version is that they're gonna have less aggressions or yeah. the best version is that they're gonna make it through, you know, two pages of math without a meltdown, mm -hmm. like it's worth also taking the time to um, internalize that and using those as your standards for like whether, you know, like the day did go well because look at these little wins that we did have yes. and look at how our family worked together. And yeah. I think right now a lot of parents are probably thinking, I have to manage all this stuff that I'm not used to. Yeah. But your, your, your language seems to communicate that this, it, it's a community process and, and you're the leader of the community that's trying to make it happen. Right. So yes. And I think um, we could really talk all day. <laughs> all day. <laughs> I think that, um, you know, I'm sensitive too to the fact that like my oldest is, is six and a half, right? So his expectation is not to then parent his younger siblings, but it's actually a really beautiful thing to give him and, um, and my five year and a half year old the tools to say like, hey, you know, you guys are, are everyone in this family is really valuable just for who you are, no matter how good uh, you're doing something or, you know, and whatever it is, you're, you're valuable because you're you. And they're, they find independence in setting the table. So I have kids who, well, then I'm putting out an argument because someone wants to set out the placemats and someone else wanted to set out the placemats. Like they find this um, real beauty in, in helping out our family and it gives them the independence that they want to be able to do things. So it's not just like, you know, we're all on the grind now. Like it's, it's actually, it can be built in a way that um, is really beneficial for everyone. So th this, this quote, I just find really beautiful to remember like what we're doing this for. And I know there's a lot of quotes going around positivity and all of that stuff is really beautiful to keep in mind. Um, this struck me a while ago, far before the pandemic, um, but it says, listen to one another with your eyes, um, your ears, eyes, hearts, mouths, and the palms of your hands and keep the roaring of the noise of the world away from your homes because it is like raging storms and violent waves. Once it enters the home, it will sweep away everything and disperse everyone. Preserve the warmth of the family because the warmth of the whole world cannot make up for it. And I just think that um, 
that really speaks to what's going on outside. We're, we're literally in quarantine right now. We're able to focus a lot of our time on our family. Um, that's not to say that people aren't still working, that it's not a struggle or any of those things, but it is to say that there can be beauty um, in, in this place that we're in right now. And to keep all of that noise, whether it's the media, social media, um, your own ruminations outside and to protect what you have um, in your home as, as the most important thing. So anyway, I hope I've given you guys something that you'll be able to, to work with. Um, please know it all comes from, uh, from my heart and, uh, from the things that work for us, which is not to say that anything that you're doing, um, or anything that I'm doing is right for anybody else, but, but just that, you know, whatever I can offer, um, I, I hope to be hopeful to someone. So thank you, Aubrey. Yeah, thank you so much for coming. I'm uh, sorry that you couldn't be here in real time because I know right. our parents would ask 500 million questions um, based on what you've said. Um, so I really hope and, and know that it's going to be very valuable and as a way for families to start their week and to go in with maybe a new perspective and a new mindset um, to really be the leader of their community, the leader of their family um, and get out of overwhelm and into action. See you guys later.